What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thanks so much for joining. I have some awesome things out of the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning for you. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be discussing the differences between ARM or Apple Silicon chips. As you might have heard recently, they've transitioned their Intel processors into their own Apple Silicon, comparing those to x86 chips. I imagine lots of people are interested in this due to the mind-blowing performance of the new M1 chips that Apple has come out with. This has a lot of people scratching their heads. So why are they so different and why does the M1 appear to be so performant? The main difference is in something called the instruction sets that both types of processors work with. Intel processors have the x86 chip, which allows complex instructions to be run. Whereas the M1 has the ARM chip, which allows more simple instructions to be run. Instruction sets are basically directions that tell the processor where it can move data. This could be between registers and memory, between memory and memory, or between registers. And it can also mean trying to calculate something with a particular operation. Since you can run complex instructions with the x86 chip, it's really run the world for the past several years in terms of computing. Intel chips for the last several years have really been the go-to for high performance computers, your high-end i7, i9 processors. They're pretty much powering a lot of the computers today. If you were using one of these Intel chips, you were using the x86 chipset. Even if you were using an AMD processor, you were, you were also using the x86 chipset because Intel licenses its technology for AMD to use. The x86 chips have been getting faster and faster every year, but true innovation has really stagnated and it's difficult since the gap between transistors or the node that we're at is beginning to shrink so small. The latest chips are down to seven nanometers with this particular dimension and Intel's continuing to try to shrink this architecture smaller and smaller every two years. It's known as Moore's Law. Um, and they're trying to get to five nanometers uh, within the next year. So they're very focused on sticking with their existing infrastructure, their existing architecture, and trying to just make everything smaller. I liken this to Intel just trudging along in a tunnel, just trying to get to the other side. While all this was going on with x86 appearing to dominate the high performance computing market, a completely different technology called ARM is completely crushing the mobile market. This is essentially what's running most of your smartphones today. The use case of cell phones had a real focus on low power consumption. So ARM and its simple instruction set really seems like a great option for cell phones. And one of the things was no one really envisioned using those for, for desktops, at least not at such a large scale, until Apple did it. So the ARM chipset sounds too good to be true, right? There's, there's no disadvantages. Well, not exactly. Even though it sounds great, there's a couple disadvantages that I'll talk about now. So due to the fact that they run on more simple instructions than their x86 counterpart, they typically need more instructions to perform a given task, and this can impact memory significantly. Another big barrier for ARM adoption is the fact that not many desktop apps at all are written to support this architecture. This also includes most operating systems like Windows. Most are written for the x86 chipset. However, there's still a couple, but not very widely used, that are written for ARM, like the Raspberry Pi operating system. And the fact that operating systems never really made this jump could have been the reason that Intel kind of got stuck in a rut with this. They had to keep making x86 chips since Microsoft was always written for that instruction set. One of the really cool things about the ARM chipset is that it's able to share workload across a lot of different types of cores. And that's exactly what you see in the M1. There are four high performance cores shared with four low performance cores. So you can see the, the traditional way of thinking was really that ARM was great for mobile and x86 was always the way to go for, for anything desktop or laptop related. Well, as you know, Apple has completely turned this notion upside down with their new M1 MacBook. 
By creating a chip with this architecture, as well as the corresponding operating system that runs natively on ARM, we're able to see the true power of this combination. Nobody really had thought about this at this particular scale. Apple broke out the side of the tunnel that Intel was traveling down. And as you've probably seen either my review or other people's reviews, the performance of these computers is incredible. I've noticed that I wasn't talking about speed ups in terms of 10% speed up or 20% speed up. I was talking about multiples of my previous MacBook speed. I've made several videos about the performance of my new M1 MacBook. I encourage you to check those out. I'll be sure to link those in the description for you. Even though the speed on particular apps is mind blowing, the infrastructure switch is not quite there yet to get full native ARM support. A lot of developers are still working on making that change. However, one of the really awesome things that Apple did was they made a great transitionary software called Rosetta. This is able to translate the x86 chipset instructions into ARM instructions so that they can still run almost all the programs that you already run. This will give the developers time to make that change. And unfortunately, they just won't have that same performance that they, they otherwise would, but they still run very fast. And what's really exciting for, for people who like the M1 chips is that Apple is not planning to stop here with the MacBook series. They're planning to expand the ARM architecture all the way out to their high-end Mac Pro by 2022. This commitment to ARM is really going to ensure that application developers are going to be creating versions of their software that go along with this architecture. And with more development, we're sure to see the coverage of ARM-supported applications to get even better in the coming years. Well, that's about all I had for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in to this discussion of ARM versus x86 chipsets. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like as well as a comment down below. Also, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.